Hi guys, it's Alex Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today I'm gonna to share a little bit of a mini collection video with you and today we're talking about incense. I did this video back in Val around Valentine's Day with the rose perfumes in my collection. So because I've got a significant amount of incense perfumes, I thought I would share them with you. A little collection, have a little look at the bottles, you know. It's the sort of stuff I like to watch on YouTube, so maybe you do too. Before we start though, let's talk about incense very briefly. What is it? What is incense in perfumery? You have a little think about that. I'll just, I'll just wait for you, I'm not going anywhere. Quite often you will hear a reviewer say, or you'll read a written review about a perfume and they will say, it smells like incense. <clears throat> what does that mean? Incense is not attributed to one thing. Um, so if you do hear that, maybe call the reviewer out. I don't want to start any drama, but it's a very vague term. It would be like me saying, this perfume smells like flowers. Thank you, good night. It really depends on what it is. Incense is a fragrant material that is burned to produce fragrant smoke. If you were in the Middle East, you would be dealing with bakhor, which is oil-soaked wood chips, which are heated to create a fragrant aroma. Um, if you're in a cathedral, you'll be dealing with myrrh, which is placed into censers and burned and swung around and smoked everywhere. If you're in Japan, you might be dealing with Zuko incense. If you're in India, it might be a jostic which has a very distinct smell depending on what's in there. So there is not one thing that constitutes incense. Make your reviewers be a little bit more specific for your own knowledge. I may have been guilty early on in my YouTube journey by saying it smells incense-y, but I'm trying. Anyway, without further ado, these are the fragrances of mine that I consider to be incense-y and they're all different. I have left out the rose incense perfumes that were in my rose video because they're over there doing their thing. So for now, here are the fragrances I own that I consider to be incense-y in many different ways. So the first one is Le Toir and this one is by Diptyque. This one is the most incense-y perfume that I think the brand sells and this is super kind of, uh, I guess, churchy smelling. This has frankincense in it, which is usually the main culprit when someone says it smells of incense because it's quite commonly used. And frankincense smells green. It smells coniferous, it smells a little bit limey, it smells like it comes from a forest somehow, and also resinous. This has labdanum in it as well, which is another resin which to me smells incense -y, as well as leathery as well and woody and it's multifaceted and it also has myrrh another culprit for things smelling like incense it's a really great one it's kind of i think it's a bit challenging really but i like it it's spicy and smooth at the same time and it has multiple layers of incense notes going on it's called le toit it's kind of a nod to the fact that there's three founders of diptyque and also maybe the Magi gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Anyway, we're gonna move on. Let's skim through them so you can see the pretty bottles. That's why you're here, really. The next one is one of my favorite perfumes ever, and it's been put through the ringer. You can hardly even see the name of it anymore, but it's this one. It's called Junkie, and it's by a brand called Jardin Decrivan. And this one is a frankincense, and it's such a unique, beautiful perfume. There's violet in here as well. There's gardenia. It's almost soapy and clean and green smelling and light and woody and it's a tricky one to describe and it's one that I've wanted to review since I got it actually and I just don't know why I haven't. It's one of those you have to smell it to, to kind of understand it but it's definitely, I've never smelled a fragrance like this before and it's really affordable, it's just so beautiful but this one is about frankincense but the frankincense in here doesn't lend its coniferous side it gives it a crisp kind of green clarity without being piney oh just so so nice anyway that's junky by jardin de Pivon. oh there's hemp in it as well which is why it's called junky this one is called everlasting and it's by a brand called the zoo they're from new york this one is all about labdanum and labdanum is usually what's involved when you when you're smelling the amber accord but labdanum on its own to me like i said before is very complex it's a woody leathery incensey sometimes spicy resinous thing it's a it's you can wear it alone it's that beautiful and this is 
such a good representation of raw labdanum and it makes me think of incense when I smell it. Incense is very interpretive, not interpretive, but it's open for interpretation. What one person thinks it is, one person might not. This is just my take on the things that I own. But anything that has a prominent labdanum note either falls into the ambery category for me or incensey. And this particular one is incensey. This one also has daffodil and moss in it as well. A couple of other things too. The next one is one of my top 10 perfumes ever, I think, and it's this one. It's Le du Desert Marocain number no. two, and it's by Andy Tower. This is another labdanum fragrance, again with spices and warmth. And this is, in terms of how incense it smells, for me it's on the gentler side. It does lean more ambery, kind of like Everlasting, but there's definitely an incense element going on with it. The lid is so hard to get off, oh my gosh. This is just an incredible perfume for something that's so sweet. I wouldn't normally wear something like this, but it's really beautiful. Andy Tower's perfumes are lovely. I actually have a bunch of samples that I'm going to sniff on camera because there's more of his that I need to discover. But this is quite popular among niche lovers and there's a reason for it because it, it's so expertly blended. It's seamless. I don't know. It's just a very beautiful perfume. So the incense here is labdanum again. There's also birch in here as well. And birch normally contributes a bit of smoke to a perfume. So that's maybe where I'm going, you know, the smoke with the resin makes me feel like I'm smelling incense. So gorgeous. The next one is a really famous perfume and it is Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. I have the Eau de Parfum version and I have the newer version of it. This one is, oh, it's myrrh again, this one. This one has a multiple incense -y feeling for me. It's spicy as well, there's florals in it. Very famous perfume, it was kind of groundbreaking when it came out and it's considered old school and vintage, but there's no denying that this is a masterpiece of a perfume and I still really appreciate it today as much as I, have ever done really even though it came out i think in the 80s maybe i might be getting that wrong i'm gonna spray it right now so rich really multi-layered there's just oh it's smooth as well smooth and spicy at the same time somehow just works you know i don't know how but it does mm. this one's about the opium dens of i guess shanghai possibly uh, it was quite controversial when it came out because of the name as well. I mean, opium, addictive substance, opiates, they're hallucinogenic. So, uh, but it did start a trend. So it's a legendary fragrance for that reason. And it doesn't really smell smoky. So it's not like an incense smoke, but it does have, because it's, dare I say, oriental. I know that word is becoming a trigger for a lot of people. It's a style of fragrance that has been around forever and I think it's now becoming one of those words that you might not be able to use anymore. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I know, I need to process that information. But, um, yeah, I need to fig figure out how I feel about that. I don't know if I should say that anymore or not. But um, it's, it's kind of ambery, myrrh, spicy, multi-complex fragrance, which is hugely famous. Try it out if you haven't. The next one is Tom Ford and it's called Sahara Noir. This is unbelievable. This is to me an exact replica of what a cathedral smells like if they have been burning incense in there. I went to Nice with a friend in the south of France and we stepped into a cathedral, a beautiful one there, and I said, someone's wearing Tom Ford Sahara Noir. Stupidly, <laughs> clearly not. The fragrance is inspired by the ancient, <laughs> you know, thing of burning myrrh and putting it in a sensor and swinging it. I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. This is so good. It's, um, oh, it, oh, it's just really great. So this one is labdanum again. There's a bit of oud in here. There's a couple of other balsams. There's a couple of uh, coniferous notes going on in it as well, but it really just, it just really replicates the smell of cathedral incense in one of the most perfect ways I've ever seen. Next, we're going to a temple. Temple incense. 
an entirely different kettle of fish for me. And this one's called Manishtana and it's by a brand called Puffam, uh, Puffam's Prasana. Yes, Manishtana Puffam Prasana, that rhymes. This is a very multi-layered complex incense perfume, but when I smell it, it really takes me to a temple. It reminds me of places that I visited in Thailand. This has got cumin. The note list is as long as your arm. And this is, this is the first one on the list that kind of incorporates that jostic kind of smell for me. It's dry and woody at the same time. I'm gonna spray it because I haven't worn this for a long time. Gosh, it's, it's absolutely stunning. Every time I smell this, I just think, oh, I feel like I'm really lucky to have this. Niche brand, uh, it's a Thai perfumer that made this, Prin Lomros, you might know who he is. He's made some for Zoologist, he has three lines of his own fragrances as well. And this is a spicy, woody incense. Like I said, it's a bit dry, but yeah, I immediately feel temple vibes when I smell it. And it's so beautiful in autumn and winter. I don't know if this is the right time to be doing an incense video, but it's not really summery outside, so that's why I was feeling this way today. Unbelievable. Multiple spice, multiple woods, multiple incense notes. Like, if I read them out, we'll be here for a week. But yeah, Manishtana by Parfum Prasanna is one of my top incense perfumes. The next one is called Bois d'Esquesse, and this is by a lady called Naomi Goodsir. It's a French brand, but she's actually Australian. And the story goes, she used to own a chapel, I think, in Australia, and it burnt down in a forest fire, which is incredibly tragic. But she made a fragrance inspired by that. This one is frankincense, and it's also oak and tobacco and smoke, of course. This one has whiskey as well. So this is like a the richest kind of smoky dark whiskey incense that you can ever try. It's quite a dry one as well. It's really powerful and it's kind of gothic. I really enjoy this one. It's such an unassuming bottle as well. I mean, you wouldn't really, I mean, I don't know if I would pick that up in a shop, but she only has five perfumes, this lady, and all of them are incredible. In these plain little bottles that, you know, just don't look like much. So well crafted. She's not the perfumer, but, um, it's brilliant. Bois de Scaire by Naomi Goodsir. Check her out. Ria by Etat Libre d'Orange. This one is considered a leather, this perfume, but there is a huge incense streak in it as well. This one is kind of, to me, I always say it smells a little bit like tar. Like, uh, sorry, I'm just surreptitiously cleaning it off camera while I talk to you because some of them have been put away for a while. Yay, it's all shiny again. This is incredibly powerful. It's a dark leather and it's, the incense is, I would say, behind the leather. And the incense in here is, it could possibly be an accord of some kind. Um, the note lists, the note list just says incense, but there's definitely a smoke element going on with this. It feels like a dark, almost gasoline leather boot type smell with incense smoke, smoke going on behind. And it's, it's a fragrance that's so, I don't want to say overbearing, but it kind of is. It's, I can only really wear it one day at a time. I can't wear this for multiple days in a row because once I've worn it once, I have to give it a break because it's kind of, yeah, unforgiving. <laughs> but I really like it and it's one of the only three uh, fragrances in my collection from this brand, all of which are incense actually, so they're all here. So let's move on to the next one. From the same brand, Marquis de Sade. Uh, this one is also considered leathery, but to me it's definitely incense because what's happening here is one material, it's labdanum again, and from labdanum, you can pull out what you want. Like I said, it's multifaceted, sometimes ambery, sometimes leathery, woody, incense -y. And this to me is kind of in the same vein as the Zoo one, Everlasting. But this one's much smoother. And I consider it an incense perfume more than a leather. It's really nice. It's a quite approachable incense perfume. It's The labdanum here is very smoothed out. It's not as raw as it is in the Zoo one. So yeah, 
really pleasant easy going this one is nice to layer i mean i haven't but i definitely would consider it i don't really like layering though to be fair quite a simplistic stripped back labdanum it's like labdanum simplified so if you want to discover that note i would try and find this one and see what you think let's talk about lulu lulu another iconic fragrance from the 80s this is the floral incense of the bunch there's so many things going on here mainly it's tuberose that i smell but this has a dark smoky incense note behind which isn't resinous it's not a frankincense or a myrrh or an oud or anything like that it's got the smoke in here is kind of like a veil over the entire composition and it kind of meanders through all of the flowers that are in it it's such a, an amazing perfume and it's definitely not for everyone so it's a incredibly bold floral with an incense background and if i'm going to put it on anything because i don't want to be that person that says it smells like incense i would say it's in the kind of jostic category yeah i'll leave it at that lulu i mean it speaks for itself it's lulu let's talk about my favorite amouage fragrance i am still discovering more amouage i've smelled pretty much all of their main lines and still none of them come close to this one it's from their library collection and it's called Opus 9. Can you see the gold shininess on the bottle? I don't know if you can. Anyway, the bottle's red and it has gold glitter in it and it's really, really pretty. No, still none, still none have ever beaten this fragrance. This one is another floral incense. This is a huge jasmine. There is an indolic animalic jasmine going on with the added animalic of civet underneath so it takes it even more into the depths of the animal realm there is quite a bunch of pepper in here and then incense 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 it's a semi smoky incense smell in this one it's not a resinous one kind of like lulu so this is again leaning towards the jostic kind of incense but the jasmine really takes center stage in it and the animalic or oh, it's just it's slightly challenging to wear but i am all about this amouage perfume i'm still to find one that i enjoy more than this and i haven't done it yet what would this list be without some zoologists we're going to talk about camel this is my second favorite from all of zoologists perfumes the other one is coming up which is my number one and this is oh, I mean, I've waxed lyrical about this one. This is actually frankincense in this one and myrrh, I believe, but mainly it's about frankincense. This is about camels and trade routes and things that camels carry. You have date kind of notes in it, stewed fruit. There's orange blossom in here. There is oud in this one, but the incense note comes from frankincense. It's multiple, multiple incensiness, multiple resins, it's a little bit sweet, flowery as well, but really it's, I'm going to have to say oriental because it's, it's, it is, it's that style of fragrance. If the world goes mental and I'm not allowed to say that anymore, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, somebody posted an article in my Facebook group about it and, you know, is it politically correct? Do we need to change it? So I'm worried that I'm going to get in trouble, but it's a style of fragrance that's been around for decades. And this is uh, Zoologist's Oriental. It's one of their Oriental fragrances and it's amazing. So it's a fruity, floral, huge resinous incense perfume with a touch of oud underneath. There's not too much and that's why I really like it. The next one is Amouage Memoir Woman. I have never quite smelled a Chypre fragrance like this. It's ultimately a Chypre perfume so that it has, it does have that mossy, the greenery kind of thing going on, the scratchy woodiness. I've never smelled a Chypre that has quite as much incense in it as this one. This is smoky. It's a smoky dark Chypre and it's a great one. Oh my gosh, I, when I wear this, I garner compliments. It's quite intriguing. It's a bold perfume for sure. 
There's animalics in here, you've got castorium, there are aromatic notes like wormwood, it's leathery also, I mean it kind of touches on a lot of things and it's another one where the note list just says incense, um, but it's definitely a the smoky type. You know, you have materials that are used for incense and then you have materials that become incense once they're burned, if that makes sense, and this is like the after part. This is like something has already been burned and it's created this smoky feel. Just really good. It's definitely in my top five Amoir ears because obviously I own it. So yeah, just really enjoy this one. It's called Memoir and it's the woman one. One of the more recent additions to my collection is this. It's called Lita and it's by Bogue or some people call it Bogue. And this is <sighs> very interesting. This one is another, I'm going to put it down to floral incense, but there is so many things going on that it's one of those, every time you smell it, there's something else that comes out at you. There's a gorgeous floral mixture in the heart, which is somewhere around Champaca and Gardenia. It's a white floral mixture. But then you have tons of myrrh. This is one of the most myrrhy fragrances in this list, and myrrh is one of the richer resins it's sometimes it's so rich that it almost smells like coffee and um, this has got that going on it's oh god it's it's incredibly opulent this one it's it feels like you're wearing 10 perfumes at once but it's so expertly blended and it's done with such an expert hand the perfume is perfumer is antonio gardoni who made t-rex and he's got a fragrance called my as well uh, yeah, Lita, just a lot going on, but really it's about myrrh. So if you're a myrrh lover, definitely try this out. Tons and tons of things. There's Tonka in here as well, I remember. So there's sweetness as well. There's a lot. But anyway, Lita by Bogue. This one has to buzz into this video. B by Zoologist. I can't even wax lyrical about this perfume enough. I mean, it is unbelievable. I don't really wear gourmand perfumes that much anymore. But the minute I tried this fragrance, I knew I was in love with it. It's so voluminous. It's like a cloud when you wear it. It's huge. It's mainly centered around mimosa and beeswax and other flowers. I think orange blossom again in this one. But the surprising thing about it is when it dries, it reveals this huge streak of incense smoke and it's i don't know i don't know where that comes from because i don't know what victor or the perfumer used to create that but i'm really glad they did it's such an unexpected twist when you wear it you get this kind of toffiness at the beginning and these beeswaxy royal jelly kind of smells and it's kind of playful and thick and heady and then out of nowhere it just starts to reveal this incense and people have actually said that they've said what you, you smell like incense and it's just something that i didn't expect and it's such a lovely element to something that is gourmand i don't know it's a smell to be believed kind of perfume and it's in my top five zoologists and oh i just i love her so much look at her she's so cute with her little royalness going on. Anyway, that's B by Zoologist. The next one is the one that I describe as the ugly duckling in my collection. Every time I describe it, I say it's the ugly duckling in my collection, but I love it all the same. It's a real challenging perfume, this one, and it's called MM Ink. It's by Byredo. And unusual is very much an understatement when it comes to this one. This is Clover Honey. It has a huge animalic feeling. It's quite a dirty perfume. And it has ink, of course, and it has incense. And the incense in here, again, is smoky. It's not a resinous one. It's a dark kind of brooding fragrance. But then, besides all of that, it has something in it called adoxal, which is a molecule which to me smells kind of like laundry. So. It pulls you in two directions. You have this cleanliness happening on one point. The first time I smelled it was on a person and I, they smelled very clean, but with something lurking underneath that was 
bordering on unpleasant and my intrigue level was so huge I just wanted to get it straight away and I've had it ever since. It's not one that I wear too often, it really calls for a mood or a feeling or an occasion for me but when I do want to wear it, I, it it's an empowering one because I know that I smell odd as hell and intriguing and I like creating mystery sometimes when I wear a perfume so yeah people describe this as hamster cage so burning incense next to a hamster cage with some honey <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty much what mm ink smells like and it's inky too because that's what it's inspired by amazing the next one is a fragrance that I have multiple backups of and the one that I'm using is a little bit battered so excuse its appearance. <laughs> it's Argent Provocateur and it's called La Jante. Is the camera going to focus on this shiny thing here? I don't know. Uh, it's called La Jante. This is, to me, I've always said one of the best commercial perfumes. It's an unsung hero. It sometimes gets overlooked. It smells I don't know, it's so unique. We're talking about myrrh again with this one. This is unbelievably beautiful and that's why I've got backups of it because I think it's discontinued but you can still find it in certain places. Just dig a little bit before people start saying, where can I get it? I don't know, do some digging and find it. Oh. So this is powdery flowers. There's multiple kind of rosiness going on in this one. It's also leathery and the main thing though is the core of it, which is a gorgeous, smooth, touch smoky myrrh. So I'd never thought that a commercial perfume would ever smell like this. I mean, back in the day they did, but not things that are new. And I will always stand up for this perfume and say how great it is. If you like that dark, a little bit dominatrixy kind of femme fatale sort of perfume that's kind of what Argent Provocateur do don't they they're a little bit I don't know burlesque type feeling uh, they're, they're quite bold with their fragrances well the older ones at least and this one is just incredible and the lasting power is unbelievable as well the first time I smelled this was on a friend on Halloween she wore it out we got home at four in the morning and I could still smell it on her just I could just continuously smell it on her so yeah 10 out of 10 on every level for this one please don't kill me for talking about this fragrance again on my channel but it fits this theme and it's one of my top five perfumes ever in the entire world it's another zoologist and it's called moth eh, anyone that follows me will know what this fragrance is because I've probably mentioned it a million times so I won't talk too much about it this is not even a perfume, this is art. That's, I'm gonna just say that straight away. Made by a Japanese perfumer, this is honey and smoky jostic incense for me, this one. It's not a resinous incense. And there is dusky florals going on. There is heliotrope. There is, I think, violet, possibly rose. Um, I mean, I, I've stopped looking at the notes of it because I just like to experience it for moth for being what it is it's i describe it as hauntingly romantic there's an there's an air of romance to this perfume there's a tenderness in amongst a darkness and i just can't get over it but this one the incense in here is smoky so it's to boil it down it's a smoked honey incense that's what it is and it's a jostic incense with dusty flowers i won't talk about it too much because man i've talked about it enough the next one is 34 boulevard saint germain the eau de toilette version from diptyque and it's the black lid one the white lid one is not an incensey perfume this one leans more ambery and they don't really tell you the resins that are in there but for me it feels like a gentle labdanum possibly a little bit of myrrh. There are some green notes as well. You've got cardamom, there's black currant in this one. There is clove, there is violet. I think there's a bit of cinnamon as well. This is a really nice, smoothed over incense perfume. There's no smoke in this one. So this is more about the materials before they are burned. And I've always loved this. I actually love both the white and the black version of this perfume from Diptyque. So, this is a nice, easygoing, autumnal, resinous perfume. Really beautiful, and I have the solid perfume of it as well. Both 
as equally beautiful as each other. And the last one on the list, I didn't get it out of the box and it's a little bit late now because everything is everywhere and I've already started and the bottle's that big anyway. But there is a fragrance. This is actually, dare I say, up there with my favorite incense perfumes because it's the most head shoppy smelling incense perfume I've tried. It's called Scheherazade and it's by a company called Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab from America. First time I tried this, this, it was like a eureka moment for me. It was the perfect representation of what I'd been looking for when I wanted an incense perfume for the first time. It smells like Camden Market, if you've ever been there in London. If you've ever been to a, let's say, kind of hippy dippy market where there's tie dye everywhere and, you know, jewellery and some a place like that, there must be a place like that from where you live or that you've been to. It smells like going into an occult bookshop where there are crystals everywhere. It's the perfect encapsulated incense perfume for me and I'm running out of it. I need to buy more. It's called Scheherazade by Black Phoenix, like I said. It's an oil-based perfume, but it projects like a beast. Crazy projection. It's insane. You only need a little bit and it's already swirling around you. It's one of my favorite incense perfumes ever. And that concludes this video because I've been talking for a long time. These down here, you can't see them, are my incense perfumes. I hope you liked this video. I hope you maybe learned something. If you didn't, maybe a suggestion for something that you might want to try. I'm going to continue my day. I'm out for my trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.